Before we get back into the programming, I want to share with you another register that we need to consider to actually enable the GPIO. This register is called RCC, which is Reset, Clock, and Control. And this register is actually going to be controlling a few buses that are located on the microcontroller. The bus that we're going to be interested in is the AHB bus, or the Advanced High Performance Bus. And this bus can access certain peripherals on the microcontroller, one of which is the GPIO. To make this work, we need to enable the Advanced High Performance Bus using the AHB Enable register which is under the RCC. And under this register, we can enable the clock for the port that we need, which is gonna be the GPIO C, the C being the port that we're using. Okay, here we are back in the program. Let's go ahead and put in some pseudocode for the RCC. Enable the, the GPIO, the GPIO clock for port C using the AHB and RCC. Okay. To access all of these registers, we need to put in a header file for the microcontroller. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to use the include statement. You can see that there's some IntelliSense that's going on here too. And the STM 32F0XX.h. And this header file will have all the defines, the um, specifications, all the types and things like that. So we're not going to do the function yet for waiting. Let's go ahead and tackle the registers that we need to, to specify. So we're going to start off with using the RCC type. And this is actually just a type that in C++ is a structure or a struct. And a struct is just a, a type that you define yourself. You're creating your own type that has properties and members within that type that may have their own type. So we're gonna be accessing those members using a symbol like this, it's called member access. And uh, it, it'll show you all the members in that, in that structure. So we're looking for the AHBENR, the Advanced High Performance Bus Enable Register. And we're gonna use our OR operator because we don't want to overwrite any other bits in this particular register. Let's take a look at what this register is. You know, let me take this out here. Yeah, uh, we can't find it yet. We probably have to put in more information. Let's just say this is equal to zero. Let's see if we can find more information here. Okay, so it looks like it's a 32-bit register. And I'm just hovering over it with my with my mouse, and you can see information about it from another file. If we If we go in here... If we go in here and press the right button, use open declaration, you can actually see the member within the RCC type definition. And you can see that we're also in the F030 header file, which this header file probably refers to. So let's go ahead and find the specific bit that we need to adjust in this member. And we're gonna go ahead and use RCC and find the particular reg the port that we need and the GPIO and it's the GPIO C enable it's a clock enable and it's this is really just longhand for specifying a particular address or a a hex number and that hex number is this one here you can do the same thing with this where you can open the declaration and find out where it's located and actually what number it is and this is a hex number of where an 8 is in the ninth position or the uh, fifth position and you'll find that this number is actually putting a 1 in the 19th bit of a 32-bit binary number so let's let's look at that okay so there's 32 bits here and you can see that the let's go ahead and just take this as a reference okay so the first one two three four the first four are just zero. So this particular number would have to be a an eight in in uh, in binary. This is an eight in binary where you'd if you count it up or you'd convert it from hex to binary, you get this this number here. And you'll notice that it's in the this is four, 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So this is the 20th bit, which is actually considered bit number 19 because it's indexed by zero at the, in the first bit. So we're actually just affecting the 19th bit. We could easily just do that using the bitwise operations of shift like we did in the AVR series using one shift 19. And we can do that instead of using that defined statement or the defined longhand. And this really would mean the same thing. But we're, for purposes of readability, we can go ahead and just keep the other one. So there's really no magic going on here. You can understand pretty much what's what all this means. It looks like it's like a completely different language, but don't be afraid that um, really this is just a, a specific number that is being assigned or you're just affecting one bit within the AHBENR register. Let's take a look at the GPIO enable register in the reference manual. You can find the reference manual by going to newbiehack.com and clicking on ARM development and the tutorials, the introduction, and where I talk about the actual reference manual. Just, there's a link in that paragraph. We can go straight to it by looking for the RCC, RCC clock and control. You can click on that and go straight to that page. Actually, what would be easier is to go straight to it from the the table of contents. So we should be able to find it here. Yeah, the ENR register. So we can just click on that and we'll go straight to the the actual register where you have the 32 bits and what is controlled under each bit. And you'll see that the C EN is on 19, which is what we're using. And you can see that the C here, uh, that's the port, just like on 18 would be the B, 17 would be the A, you have the D on 20, you have the F on 22. And depending on the, the processor that you have, the STM processor, you may have a lot more features that you can enable. And you'll also notice that under the AHB, you can enable other functions. So let's go back to the program. And we can take a look at this again and see that, verify that this is the 19th bit in the 32-bit number that is on. So let's go to the mode register. And we can go ahead and take a look at the register in the reference manual for the mode and see how that works. We're going to have to go to the GPIO section. Okay, and it's right here. And if you look at the, the GPIO registers, we can just go to that one because we're going to find all the registers in this location anyway. And the mode register is the first one. And you'll notice here that they give you what has to be inserted into the two the two bit part of the 32 bit number for using what mode you need to use to enable the mode that you need. And you'll see that we have input mode, general purpose output mode, alternate function mode, and analog mode. We talked about the general purpose output mode, and that's 01. And we're gonna add, put that 01 for the pin that we need to use. And this is these are the pin numbers. But you'll notice that since there's 32 bits, and there's two bits for each pin, there's only 16 pins, so you'll see that it starts at mode 0 and mode 15, mode register 15. So you have 16 possibilities here. And we're looking for the 6th, so we have to go to the mode R6. And that's the one we're going to be putting a 0 and a 1 in. So let's go ahead and look at how we do that in programming. To access the GPIO C, the GPIO port C, we just type in GPIO. And we can go down to C here. And we're going to use the, the symbol that we get the member access. So we're going to get the members here. And you'll notice that we can go straight to mode R, which is mode register. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use the, the OR operator. So we don't trouble any of, any of the other bits in that register. We're only concerned with port C pin 6. And we don't want to mess up any of the other pins that may be already set there. So we're going to start typing GPIO and then underscore mode, and you'll see we have a list of the possibilities. We're gonna go to number six. The one that we want is zero. And let's take a look at that number so we can understand what it's really doing. So this is a hex number. So let's take a look at what this hex number is. So we know that the first three are zeros, 
And then the next one is just a one. So actually we just put a one there because that's what one is in binary from hex. It's on the 12th location. Let's take a look at what this shows us in the data sheet. This is the 12th. So by putting a one, this is a zero and a one. So you can see that this is setting it for zero and one. We're set with the making our sixth pin a general purpose output mode. So let's take a look at the type. In the type register, you can find here in the reference manual, and you can see that there's only one bit for each pin. So you have 16 pins, and you have either a zero or a one you can place into that bit for the pin. And since we're not using open drain, we're gonna use a push pull. We're gonna, we can actually keep it at zero or we can make sure that it is at zero. So we're gonna do that. We don't want to just assume that it, it is at zero because we could have a much more complex program here and we wanna make sure that we, we set it to zero. So GPIOC, and we're gonna access the type, access the type member. And this time we're gonna use the, the and not bitwise operator because we want a zero to be in that location. And I'm gonna use brackets because I like to use brackets when I use the not. We're gonna to go to the number six. There we go. This will have a one in that location on the bit, but since we're using the, the not operator, it's gonna turn that into a zero. Since we're using this sort of operation, we will not interfere with any other bits that are on that type register. Let's just take a look at the the number looks like it's just a, a zero and then a four so that would be uh let's just we're only we're only concerned with these the last two digits of the hex number a zero and a four so this would be zero and the four would just be a one in that in the in the third position so this would be zero one two three four five six and that would be the sixth location in the register which is pin number six and since we're using the not symbol, this will make sure that this is a zero in that location. Now let's take a look at the speed. Let's put a C here so we can, we're using the speed here. And let's see, let's take a look at the speed in the reference manual. And you can see we have low, medium, and high. And we're gonna use high. And you should also understand that there may be different power conditions that will be imposed on the microcontroller by changing different speeds. By selecting high speed, you may actually be drawing more current. So you need to understand that when selecting this particular register. So let's take a look at the number six would be here. That would be the 12 and 13. And we we're gonna be doing high speed, so it's gonna be a one one. So let's take a look at what that would be in, we're probably going to be using the OR operator. The speed for number six should be the one, one, should be this, actually no, it would be the, just the six. It should be a three there, yeah, because a three is a one and a one. So let's take a look at that. So we have, well, the three is, see the one, two, and then the three would be the one, one. So that makes sense. So we want to make sure that, that both of those bits are set for 12 and 13. Now we have the pull up and pull down register. I keep forgetting to see here. Let's take a look at the data sheet for that. And for no pull up and pull down, that's what we want, zero, zero. So to make both of these zero, since we want both of them zero, we need to do an and not for a one and a one. So we know that the one, the, the one that was, has a three in it has a one and a one in, that, in those positions. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna use the and and not again. And the one without a suffix of, of a zero and a one, that will give us a, uh, an, uh, a three at that location. Let's take a look. Yeah, so that will ensure us that the those two positions are at zero because we're using the AND and not bitwise operator. I'm going to stop here. In the next video, we'll look at getting the delay function created, and then we'll start sending the signal on and off. Thank you for watching.